It's fitting that this summit is being held during the United Nations International Decade for People of African Descent, 1st of January 2015 to the 31st of December 2024. I wish to thank His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta for the sterling efforts that have brought us to this juncture. We must also acknowledge, apart from our centuries-old ties, the many African and Caribbean architects and champions of closer political, social, economic, and cultural linkages between and among our sovereign states. Africa has been CARICOM's invaluable partner in several platforms, such as the United Nations within the Group of 77, and in our dealings with Europe under the umbrella of what is now the organization of African, Caribbean, and Pacific states. United, we have known success. Closer collaboration will undoubtedly be our, to our mutual benefit, whether it be in pursuing development finance, resource utilization, and debt sustainability, maximizing the green and blue economies, the United Nations Security Council reform with Africa and small island developing states adequately positioned, or in the existential fight against climate change, the effects of which are wreaking havoc the world over and exacerbating our peculiar vulnerabilities. We look forward, therefore, to a meaningful outcome in Glasgow at COP26, working alongside our global partners. As chairman of CARICOM during the first half of this year, I can attest to the value of closer collaboration between our regions. As COVID-19 ravaged the social and economic fabric of our nations, CARICOM prioritized the early sourcing of COVID-19 vaccines to inoculate as many people as possible before additional threats, such as new variants, presented themselves. The prevailing vaccine inequity, commonly called vaccine apartheid, stymied that plan. I therefore wish to register my sincere gratitude to His Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, President of South Africa, and His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta, co-chair of the summit. Also, President Nana Ado Akufuado of Ghana for the meaningful discussions and interventions during my tenure and the pragmatic solutions arrived at in the face of this global health crisis. Thankfully, last month, CARICOM began to receive a substantial alloc allocation of vaccines under the African Medical Supplies Platform. Thank you, Africa. I am pleased to confirm that my country's first tranche was received on 19th August 2021. Trinidad and Tobago's linkages to Africa run deep as marked by our bilateral relationships, observer status at the African Union, high commissions in Nigeria and South Africa, and honorary consuls in Ghana and Kenya. Soon, we too will avail ourselves of the magnanimous gesture of the government of Kenya to provide office space for CARICOM's diplomatic presence in Africa, a tangible manifestation of the commitment to engage Africa's sixth region as reflected in your Blueprint for Development Vision 2063. It's been long in coming to this point today but it's a continuation of that journey outlined by our own George Padmore, CLR James, Dr. Eric Eustace Williams, and many others who anticipated that this milestone could be reached to strengthen us in an increasingly hostile world. Notably, our country's Vision 2030, finalized during my administration's first term in office, highlights deepening the relationship with Africa, among other partners. We have strong people-to-people -people ties 
and have welcomed distinguished African leaders to our shores, with the most recent in 2019 being His Excellency Nana Ado Dankwa Akufo Ado of Ghana. I had the privilege of undertaking an official visit to Ghana in 2016 and building on the African Energy Initiative spearheaded by former Prime Minister Patrick Manning, sharing over 160 years of experience in the energy sector. We welcome the inclusion on today's agenda of trade and investment and highlight the symbiotic relationship that exists with improving transport connectivity. While digital functionality is an imperative with online platforms such as this being ubiquitous, in-person exchanges will boost our trade, investment, and tourism activities. We believe that there's scope also for immediate closer cooperation in the areas of finance and agriculture. In the financial services sector, some advances have already been made. Our Trinidad and Tobago's Republic Bank Limited acquired in April 2018 the majority shareholding of HFC Bank of Ghana Limited as part of its aim to be a key player in corporate banking internationally. We therefore look forward to continued investment in both directions. We in CARICOM are actively engaged in discussions to establish an investment fund to unlock and sustain our development programs. We trust that Africa will invest with us as we are indelibly imprinted with Africa in us. There's also scope for collaboration in the creative sector, which has been particularly hard hit by the pandemic. Africa and the Caribbean have gifted the world with exceptional talent, be it in music, publishing, film, or fashion. Let us strengthen the links between our region's creative industries a sector described by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, as having the capacity to be, and I quote, drivers of cultural, economic, and social outputs for sustainable development, unquote. We must also seek out ways to mend the socio-cultural dissonance derived from the legacy of slavery, educational programs, the development and promotion of genealogy, of heritage tracing, may prove instrumental in finding and filling the knowledge and familial gaps. In closing, I look forward to deepening our strategic partnership in the best interests of our citizenry. I wish to, quote, to close by quoting the great Kwame Nkrumah, who said, and I quote, I am not Africa because I was born in Africa, but because Africa was born in me, unquote. Thank you, colleagues, and I look forward to a continuation of this long and successful journey. Thank you.